Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, let's have a look at the 2017 question again, a uh, financial maths one, um, quite different to the last one we did, the 2018 question. So a new machine is bought for 30,000. Its value depreciates by 50,000 each year for five years. Find the value of the machine at the end of five years. Okay, um, many pieces of machinery depreciate or lose value year on year. So a car is the very obvious one that loses value every single year. Um, so um, it's definitely going to be worth less after the five years. So to do this, um, we need the financial maths page in our log tables. Am I gone too far? No, I'm not. Here it is. So page 30. So you have a few formulas here. You've one for a compound interest. OK, so interest that's added on yearly and compounded. Uh, you have a present value one, uh, but this is the one I was looking for, which is depreciation, okay? And you can see it's actually the same as the compound interest, except um, the sign. So in compound interest, we're earning interest, so we're adding on interest every single year. In depreciation, we're losing value, so we're minusing every single year, okay? So that is the formula that you need Um, try and copy it um, for our question over here. If it'll be kind enough to paste for us, there it is. Okay, so that's our depreciation formula, so, so page 30 of the log tables. Okay, so the formula says that F is the later value, okay? Uh, and P is what we call the initial value, or F could be what we call the final value, okay? So F is the final value, P is the initial value, okay? So our P in this case will be 30,000. We have an I, which if we go back to the log tables, um, also very important up here is in all of the following, T is the time in years and I is the annual rate of interest, okay, depreciation or growth expressed as a decimal or a fraction. So that's really important. So if you have the example here, they have um, a rate of 8%, you have to convert that to a decimal for your formula. So it's the 0 0.08 that goes in for I in any of these formulas here. Okay, so our interest rate is 15%. If you can't do that as a decimal in your head, you do 15 divided by 100 and you get 0 0.15. You multiply by 100 to convert it to a percentage. You divide by 100 to convert it back out of a percentage. You do the opposite. And our T is five years. OK, so you put that into your formula. So your later value or your final value is equal to your uh, initial value. So it was bought for 30,000 bracket one minus my interest rate as a decimal uh, to the value or to the power of five. So it has five years of losing 15%. OK, that's what that means. Five years of losing 15 percent. And you put that into the formula as it's written there all in one go. So one minus no point. Uh, one five, close your bracket and then you're looking for this button. To put in the power of five, OK. And you put the five in there and for that I am getting. Um, one three thirteen thousand three hundred and eleven point one, and you have to round it so money is always two decimal places. So you see that one five nine, that nine would force the five to a six. Okay. Now a common mistake people make, if I can show you. Okay. So common mistake is you forget to convert the percentage to a decimal. And you do that. Okay, sorry, not T, but five. 
Now I want you to put that into your calculator for a minute. So one minus 15 bracket to the power of five. And you get this mad answer minus 1.613 by 10 to the 10, okay? So it, it doesn't even look like an, a real number, okay? Um, and it's a minus, so it's very hard for something to have a negative value in time. It, it could have zero, but it's very hard to get a negative value. So that's when you know, oh crap, I have forgotten to change my, um, I've forgotten to change my interest rate to a percentage. Okay, so look out for mad numbers like that because that's very easy to do to forget. So that was that was part A and, and that was worth um, 10 marks out of this 25 marker question. Part B then, a sum of money was invested for two years at 3% compound interest per year. Okay, compound interest. So this is the one that we need this time. And you'll see it's very like, um, it's very like the other one, except it's got a plus. So I still have, instead of later value, I have final value. I am P, instead of calling it an initial value, it's called the principal sum. That's a business term, but it still means initial value. Um, and again, just like before, my T is uh, time, okay? And my I is my interest rate in decimal. So let's read the question. A sum of money was invested for two years. Okay, so you can see your little t there. At 3% compound interest. So my i is 0 0.03. And of course, you can divide that three by 100 if you need to per year. At the end, oh, at the end of the two years. So the final value is equal to 30,000. Okay, it didn't say the initial value. It didn't say the principal sum. It says at the end of the two years, it has amounted to 30,000. Okay, so that goes in for your final amount. Okay, so 30,000 equals P times one plus 0.03 to the power of two. Okay. Um, I need to solve for P, obviously. Okay, so one plus 0.03 to the power of two is just a number. You can see there's no letter there. So that can go straight into a calculator. And when I put that into the calculator, I'm getting 1.0609 for that value. Okay, so I'm going to divide then both sides by 1.0619 because I want to get P on its own. And they will cancel. Okay, anything over itself cancels. So I will get P being equal to 30,000 over 1.06 not nine, and I'm getting 28,277.8, and the seven, seven, so that'll be eight, eight. Okay, so in other words, you, in, you invested 28,277 euros, 88 cents. You left it sitting there for two years, and it earned, it was gone up to 30,000 at the end of those two years. Okay, so important questions, those two. Part C of that one, your company, oh, I'm sorry, that, that part was also worth 10 marks as well. So 10 and 10. A company invested 25,000 euros for three years at a fixed rate of compound interest. Okay, so it's compound interest again. So it is this one. So let's copy him onto the next page. Okay, so our compound interest again. At the end of the three years, it amounted to 26,530. Find the rate of interest. Okay, so at, at the end of the three years, it amounted to. Okay, so the final amount was 26,530.20. Okay, and your final amount, if you're earning interest, your final amount is always going to be the bigger amount anyway. So that's how you'll know your F and your P as well. 
Okay, so I need to find the interest rate. So I'm trying to find I. So that means I must also have um, a value for T. So that is three years. Okay, so let's put that into our formula and see where we're at. So we're saying that 26,530.20 is equal to P times one plus, I don't know what I is, to the power of three. Okay, and then just like formula manipulation, you need to strip away everything from around that I. Okay, so the easiest thing to get rid of first is actually this 25,000. Okay, because it's furthest away from the I, if that makes sense. And um, so how do I get rid of it? Well, if I divide that side by 25, I also have to divide that side by 25. Okay, so let me put that into my calculator. 26, uh, 530.2 over uh, 25,000. And I am getting 1.061208. And I do leave all those decimal points in it at this early stage for an interest rate because I suppose um, you'll end up multiplying by 100. So you need a good few decimal points in this one. OK, so I hope that bit makes sense to there. OK, the next bit I need to get rid of then is, um, is this piece. OK, don't I need to get rid of that cubed on the outside? So the opposite of cubed. is three root, okay? Just like the opposite of squared is the square root, because actually in that square root, there's a little two there, we just don't bother putting it in. Okay, so in other words, if I get the cubed root of both of these, the, cu the cube and the cube root will cancel. So that on that right hand side, then I will be left with just one plus I. And if that was to the power of four, I would have a little four out here. If that was to the power of 12, I would have a little 12 out here. OK, um, and you can see um, behind this button on your calculator, the X, where it allows you to put in any power you want. Behind that, you can see uh, is a button that's here and a square root and a box, okay? So that is the square root button that allows you to put in any number up here, okay? Um, so if you wanna do that one, you can, there, there is a three root button on your calculator, but, but you don't have to use it. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. Okay, but either way, you are going three root 1.061208. OK, and I got 50 over 51 over 50. So you're putting that into the calculator and you'll get 51 over 50 or as a decimal 1.02. OK, then how do I solve for I? Well, I have to get rid of the one. So subtract one from both sides. So that you're left with just I, the interest rate here, 1.02 minus that one leaves you just the decimal 0 0.02. Now, remember in the formula that I that we solve for is interest rate as a decimal, okay? And we normally don't leave interest rate as a decimal. So when we multiply it by 100, we will get 2% equal to I. OK, and that is the rate of interest. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our level seven in electronic and computer engineering? This is a three year programme that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress onto the level eight in electronics and self-driving technologies and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.